your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Not a thing. He wants his breakfast. Bow wow. In case you missed the point, bow wow, I do too. Rover, here, have some orange juice while I get the rest of it. Roof, roof. <laughs> you do sound hungry. Well, I'm not so especially hungry now. I'm merely trying to store up energy for the whole week. What do you have to do this week that's going to require all this energy? I am moving. You? Mm-hmm. Me and Bluff. What about me? Are you going to leave me behind? Leave you behind? Oh, I should say not. Thank you. But you're not going to help with any of the heavy work. That's man's work. Bluff's not a man. Well, he's man's best friend, though. Oh, you are not going to lift a finger. Well, not a finger, maybe, but how many trunks, sofas, armchairs, and barrels full of china? Not one. It's all arranged. That sounds ominous. What's all arranged? You won't even notice that we're moving. It's all fixed. I did it Saturday while you were at the office. What did you do? Now, listen, the moving men are coming on Thursday and Mm -hmm. take out everything except the beds. Then on Friday morning, they'll take the beds, and everything will be in Eastbrook before we even get there. Oh, is that so? I just want you to know how efficient things can be. We're not even even going to pack anything except our clothing. That goes by express, and we packed most of it yesterday. They do everything else. Well, tell me, do they glue all the pieces back together when they get to Connecticut? They are bonded. Oh? Uh, What good is that? Oh, I thought you'd know. Well, that's what they told me over the phone when I asked them what happens if something gets broken. Who, uh, who told you that over the phone? The moving people. The carry-all moving people. The carry-all moving people. That's a pretty name. Isn't it? They carry all before them, I suppose, and leave nothing in one piece. David, they leave everything exactly the way they found it. Just the way they found it. Uh, Here? No, in Connecticut, silly. But they're not finding it in Connecticut. They're finding it here. You are impossible this morning. Why don't you eat those eggs? I am eating my eggs. But before I permit people to come in here and throw my possessions around, I think I have a right to know a little bit about them. Where did you find them, anyway? In the phone book. That's mm. nice, smart. Mm-hmm. We pick up where you leave off. That's their slogan. A fine slogan. What does it mean? It means that they come in here, and if they find a towel on the towel rack in New York, they take the same towel, they hang it on the towel rack in the bathroom at Eastbrook. Well, don't they send it to the laundry? David, I don't think you really want to have moving people. <laughs> I think you'd rather do it all yourself and complain. Oh, you're all wrong, darling. <laughs> Good. Because they're coming up this morning to deliver the barrels. What barrels? For the good china and silver. Well, thank goodness I'll be at the office. David, if you're going in the bedroom, take Bluff with you. I want to clean off the table, and he's always getting in the way. You Come on, Bluff. Bluff. Let's go. <laughs> the ladies have taken over. Bet you 20 cents you didn't know you had such an efficient wife. I bet you I knew it all the time. Do you really like it? Like what? Like me to be independent and efficient. Well, of course I like it. You wouldn't like me better if I were just flighty and female. <laughs> David, you didn't answer me. <gasps> the door must be the man with the barrel. All right, all right, all right, Mr. Carriol. I'm coming. Hello. Uh, do I have the pleasure of addressing Mrs. Norton? Mrs. Norton of 12C? Yes, yes, I'm Mrs. Norton. Uh, good day to you, Mrs. Norton. Good day. I'm Olson of the Carry All Movers. Hello, Mr. Olson. You brought the barrels? The barrels for the china, silver glassware, and other ends and odds, Mrs. Norton. All right, Samson, let's go. Uh, Samson is my assistant, Mrs. How'd you Norton. Do? How'd you do? Strong back, but not very talkative. Oh. Now, let's see, where's the best place to put those barrels? Well, uh, c- can't you put them in the spare room? Lucky people, a spare room. (laughs) That Mrs. Norton is fine for you. Fine for your friends. Excellent for your family. But for barrels, not so good. In fact, poor. Wouldn't you say so, Samson? (laughs) He agrees with me, Mrs. Norton. Did you see him nod? Well, uh, no, I I didn't. 
Oh, you, you can't leave them here, Mr. Olsen. We're expecting company tomorrow. We shall bend every effort to make sure that by tomorrow, the barrels are no longer in their present position. All right, Samson, take your mark. But he's picking up the lamp. Of course he is, Mrs. Norton. Samson is our lamp man. But, Mr. Olsen... Into the barrel with it. Oh, Samson, how often must I tell you not to drop lamps into a barrel? Oh. Lucky you didn't break that one, Mrs. Norton. But Mr. Olsen, I, I didn't think you were going to pack everything today. You were just going to leave the barrels here. Uh-uh. Easy with the crown derby, Samson. Uh, what did you say, Mrs. Norton? Excuse me. I said you, you aren't supposed to pack things today. You're not supposed to do that until Thursday. Mr. Olsen, my husband's most important client is coming for dinner tomorrow. Ah, that's the boy, Samson. Take it nice and easy. But he's going right on packing. Mrs. Norton, we have our orders. If you'd like to see them, well, here they are. Ah. Where? See? Right there. Well, it doesn't say anything about packing today. My dear lady, you cannot expect to penetrate the code of the moving business. You see that little BQR next to your name? Yes, I see. Well... The B stands for barrels. The Q stands for pack immediately. The R stands for start moving out the furniture upon arrival. But the people in the office said that we... Ours not to reason why, Mrs. Norton. We merely bow in the direction of higher authority and go on about our business. Do you mean you are going to move everything out today? You see that little E next to the BQR on the orders? I'm afraid to ask what that means. Have no fear, my dear lady. Be a stout heart. The E stands for essential. We are to leave your essentials here until Friday. What are our essentials? Well, in the carry-all directive 32A, essentials are defined as bedroom furniture, three kitchen pots, and enough china for the members of the household. You are two, I believe. Four. We have a dog and a cat. I am not supposed to consider animals, Mrs. Norton, but in certain cases I manage to make myself look the other way. Well, that's very nice of you, but why does it make any difference to the moving people whether we move today or Friday? Madam... Operations Farm End, uh, that's the name we've given a move in you, must be timed accurately in order that the final moves can be completed in accordance with a prearranged schedule. Uh -uh. Easy with the Linux, Samson. We want no casualties here. I'm afraid I don't understand. But if you want to know what I think, I think it's terrible. War and moving, Mrs. Norton, are terrible things. But as we say, you can't make an omelet without breaking eggs. This doesn't have anything to do with omelets that I can see. Except that you're all scrambled. Look at it this way. This afternoon, we have three quarters of a truckload empty, dispatched to Stamford, Connecticut. Yes. We're reserving that three quarters of a truck for your furniture. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, one-eighth of that load will be taken off at Stamford. Wednesday, the other eighth will go to Reading. And Friday, the remainder, your remainder, will be delivered on schedule in place in your house at Eastbrook, Connecticut. But they promised... At 0900 hours Friday... A truck will be here with one-fourth load empty, and that will take the remainder of your material directly to Eastbrook. But they promised they wouldn't move anything out of here until Friday. Well, they probably said that they would leave what you need until Friday. You'll be surprised how little you'll need. But Mr. Carrington is coming. Oh, Samson. Sometimes I think you lack respect for the finer things. Treat that Staffordshire as though it were your own, please. Discipline and taste is an essential to efficient moving, Mrs. Norton. Mm. Claudia, who have you been talking to? Oh, excuse me. I I didn't know you had visitors. Visitors? David, we've been invaded. So I see. Say, where are you going with that china? You too? I have just been explaining to Mrs. Norton that she's guilty of a slight misunderstanding. Slight? David, they're going to move everything out of here today except the bedroom and three kitchen pots. And the household china. Well, now, see here, you're not supposed to be doing that. Sir, I make you the same reply I made your wife. We have our orders. All right, Samson, start on the silverware. I feel as if we were being undressed in public. You're really planning to take everything out of here today? Mr. Norton, Samson and I will have everything in the van by 1,600 hours. 1,600 hours? You sound like the Navy. You mean four o'clock? We are like the Navy. And besides, when you say we'll have everything in the van, I I don't see you doing anything, Mr. Olson, except talk. Your assistant seems to be doing all the work. The key to efficiency is to have sufficient supervisory personnel. Without me, the whole operation would lose its balance. Mm, If you ask me, the whole operation has lost its balance already, and I'm losing mine with it. Uh Uh-uh. 
Easy with those pictures, Samson. Oh! Oh, Samson, really? One would think you have no aesthetic sense at all. Well, if we want to get moved, I guess we'd better let them do it today. I thought I was so efficient. Darling, you didn't know you were fighting a civilian navy. <laughs> As Mr. Olson would probably say, there is nothing to do but strike our colors and head back to port. Then I ought to go down with my ship. All right, you win, Mr. Carryall Movers. But just be sure it gets to Eastbrook by Friday. Now, darling, you don't have to look so heartbroken. If I had done it, they'd probably never got here at all. I love you for saying so. <laughs> Let me put my arm around you, darling. While these, uh, these vandals desecrate our home. David, it's not just us. What's going to happen when Mr. Carrington comes to dinner? And when he sits down where there isn't a chair? Well, don't worry about it, darling. Maybe, maybe they'll leave us an old crate. Well, ah, three. Every crate must be accounted for. But with 7,000 restaurants in the city of New York, why do you have to entertain your friends at home? That, my dear Mr. Olson, at least, is not any of the carry-all movers' business. All right, Samson. Now, let's get that barrel out of here. A one, a two, a three. <clears throat> Did you hear it rattle? Then take uh, it easy, Samson. Look, it's not my intention to disrupt the natural affection between man and wife. Well, that's kind of you. But if you two would only step aside, we could get this container out into the hall. Oh, I see. You want to move that container out into the hall. Is yes, that I... correct? Yes. Well, Claudia, maybe we'd better just move over here. All right, out of darling. the way. We'll move. Move. Did you say move? I said move. Oh, David, I don't ever want to hear that word again. <laughs> <laughs> Many of the conveniences that have developed in America we take for granted as part of our daily lives. One of these is certainly the variety store, familiarly known to you as the 5 and 10. This week, ladies, has been set aside as nationally advertised brands week in variety stores. So when you're wandering down the aisles of your favorite store today or any day this week, keep your eye out for brands with nationally advertised labels. And as you're shopping... I suggest that you pause at the familiar red cooler or soda fountain and refresh yourself with ice-cold Coca-Cola. Uh, if you have a moment, Mr. King. Why, yes, I do. What's on your mind, Mr. Olson? Why, I just thought I'd advise you, Mr. King. If ever you were in the circumstances of moving, be sure to call the carry-all movers. Remember our slogan, we pick up where you leave off. I'll remember that. Did you get David and Claudia moved all right? As per schedule. Operations Farm End is underway. Well, I don't know what they're going to do tomorrow, though, when Mr. Carrington comes to visit them. Ah, Mr. King, as the poets have said, where there is a will, there is a way. And tomorrow, the Nortons will find a way. Oh, uh, excuse me, I see it's 1,400 o'clock. I shall have to bid you good day, Mr. King. <laughs> good day, Mr. Olson. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause, the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya and Roger Starr. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs>